I am reading in solidarity with New Orleans, Louisiana and Idor, India. First poem I'm going to read is from my new collection. It's called Environmental Studies. I strung my heart from the strong arms of a Joshua tree to dry in the Mojave sun. It grew beautiful for a moment, beautiful as all the poetry in the world. The veins tightened and cracked, muscle fibers stiffened and swung ever so slightly in the rarefied air, paling against the blue blue of the desert sky. Sooner or later, all things in the desert turn to dust or stone and fall silent. I let my heart to drink from bleached desert ground, its fingers spread out among lonelinesses, and I sank shallowly to absorb the lesson of heat and sky. It must become harder to breathe before it becomes softer. This poem is called On the Back Page. Two bull moose, locked rack to rack like the knotted ribbon of old love letters, sunk in the slaw of Unalakleet. Their forms, frozen still in battle, were unearthed weeks later under eight inches of ice as two men toured the Bible campgrounds. Miles south, months before and after, a cowhide booted doctor who farms loneliness outside Laredo is fighting the desert for the dried out bodies of the hopeful. Their morgued hearts still seeking, the rich brown of them born to die the shallows of the Rio Grande. They too wrote love letters found folded on their bones in old jean pockets. How could they know every breath was an apology? Like the moose, no one told them where the color of our eyes goes when we die. That if we let our skins speak for themselves, they would say with their velvet tongues that love is a thin and slippery everything, not buried deep enough. And Polly, because you said in your correspondence for this event that we should maybe focus on positivity and affirmation, and I feel like most of my poems are sort of cynical, sad, a little bit, um, I wanted to read one that is not my own, that I hope you will all find as a gift of affirmation. This is by Catherine Pierce, and it was published in Diode a little over a year ago. It's called, Let Someone Say You Are Electric. And you become electric, an eel in the best possible way, flicking light and sharp static wherever you toss your tail. The whole room spins to a stop to watch you laugh with an amaretto sour in hand. Your teeth so even or so charmingly not. Why not try Gaelic or string theory? Why not karaoke Bohemian Rhapsody? Even your failures are arresting. Let someone say you are electric and the world too becomes electric. Every street light humming, not with the harbinger of burnout, but with its only scarcely contained thrill. It's desire for every person moving through its yellow orb, in particular you. Of course you, you once with the train trestle, you once with the wolfhound, you of the fascinating wrists and the boots, my God, the boots. The hawks overhead, what balletic wheeling, your orange juice a complex equation in your mouth. Does it matter if the words never lead to a large soft bed? Does it matter if the words were said a decade ago by someone whose middle name you've forgotten? Does it matter if you know the speaker or ever did? The words are what matters, 
little diamonds in your hand. Here, you are electric. Put that diamond next to the others. Make a trail of gleaming and follow it to yourself. Thank you.